Before I was a market researcher, I started my career at a radio station working for a show called Passion Phones, where the host would talk to listeners about relationships a few hours every night. However, at the same time, the host was also observing through the studio glass a budding relationship between her call screener and a producer. And that's how I met my husband. So personally, yes, Radio is my love story. <laughs> my husband actually tagged along on this trip. Some of you may have met him at the networking event last night. Uh, but yes, I can tell you, radio is my love story, but there's a love story for the car radio and the listeners too. Because those years spent as a call screener taught me how important radio was to listeners, especially when they're in the car. People spent hours listening on their commutes and in traffic, and they would call in to thank us for being their company while they were on the road. Now, after almost two decades of consumer research, I can tell you I've observed this special relationship between car owners and the radio in study after study. Even as the technology in the car has evolved and audio options have expanded, the love for radio in the car, the need for radio in the car is still there. And thanks to World DAB, we have two studies to draw upon in order to tell this story of drivers in the car and their love affair with radio. I'll highlight some data from the 2021 Car Buyer Study and the 2023 Dashboard Dialogue. Both studies include surveys and in-depth interviews with car owners and their experiences in the car. I also have lots of US data. Um, I have 10 years of data to draw from Edison's share of year study. For this study, respondents in the US complete a one, dot, one day listening diary. And the key element of this study is time. How much are, time are Americans spending with different audio content in the car? So we'll answer that today. Now, all of this research really points to one thing. Oh. All of this research points to one thing. Car owners love radio, and a big part of loving a vehicle is the radio experience. Now, people have enjoyed listening to the radio in a car for about a century, but when streaming audio entered the picture, things got complicated, as they say on Facebook. And uh, don't get me wrong, streaming audio is great, and audio audiences like having access to it on the car dashboard, but it is not a substitute for live up to the minute, local, easy to use, and free broadcast radio. Now, there's a famous American touring Europe at the moment uh, who is known for singing about love stories. So I'd like to quote the great Taylor Swift. And actually, with this microphone, I kind of feel like her right now. Best believe I'm still bejeweled. When I walk in the room, I can still make the whole place shimmer. Now, Taylor, I'll translate for you who are not Taylor Swifty fans. Um, Taylor says, don't take anything for granted. Don't get too distracted by new audio options because radio is here to remind you that it's still fabulous and it's part of the magic of driving a car. And that brings me to our first main finding. Radio is, I don't know why this is automatically going forward, but radio is the most listened to audio platform in the car. This is true even among young listeners. It is so important to understand how the average consumer moves throughout their day. And when it's in the car, for most people, it's with the radio. In Dashboard Dialogue, we asked, which do you typically listen to most often in a vehicle? 61% of interviews said they listen to radio in the car most often. That's more than online music services, uh, more than their owned music collection, and all others combined. And that's pretty typical across all markets here. Radio is the most used service in the UK, France, and Germany. And here's weekly reach of radio in the car for those three countries. 86% of car buyers listen to FM or DAB or DAB plus radio in a vehicle in the last week. So radio listening is a solid habit among car buyers. Now, I'd like to share some figures from the US, but before we look at the in-car data, let's start with overall listening. In the US, we know that AM FM radio, including broadcasts and streams, reaches 63% of the population daily. 
That's 53% reach among Americans age 13 to 34, 70% reach among those 35 to 54, and 67% among those 55 plus. And while those figures are impressive, what's really impressive is this. Today's 13 to 34 year olds are reached by at least some radio every single day. A stat that points to radio's resilient reach. On this slide, we represent in blue the 53% of those 13 to 34 year olds who listen to radio each day. Now, this can be surprising to those who believe young listeners use exclusively use these streaming services or only listen to digital audio. But location of listening is key when it comes to consumption among this group. The car is not only a good place to reach young listeners, but for many, it is the only place they listen. Among the 13 to 34 year olds who listen to any radio, 56% of them will only listen in the car. That means programmers should consider the fact that when their messages are heard by young radio listeners, it's often in an in-car environment. That also means if radio were not available in the car, we'd be missing out on one of the most effective ways to reach a large portion of this young audience. So we've established how many people are reached by radio in the car, but I'll reinforce this key takeaway by also looking at the amount of time they spend listening. Now, share of year respondents record their listening by the quarter hour. They report what platform they're listening on. So radio or podcasts or own music or streaming services. Um, they also report where they are when they're listening. And this allows us to look at the time or the share of time spent with audio in many different locations. And when we look at how much time people spend with different platforms in the car, radio comes out on top. In-car listening is dominated by broadcast radio. So here's AM, FM radio listening in the US in the car that's over the air and streams versus other audio sources. Again, this is the time spent listening, not the percentage of people. As of now, among those 13 and older in the US, 58% of their time listening in the car goes to radio. Now, Americans spend a lot of time in the car, and they're doing a lot of radio listening in the car as well. Further, those aged 13 to 34 spend just under half of their in-car audio time with radio. That's where they listen. That's where you get their attention. Another way we can think about audio consumption is the type of listening, whether it's lean back, linear listening experience, or on-demand experience driven by listener selection. In the car, 76% of time spent with audio by Americans 13 and older is with linear platforms, which include AM, FM radio, radio streams, Sirius radio, and other radio services. On-demand platforms, such as paid streaming services, podcasts, owned music, that garner 24% of total in-car listening time. So clearly a very different picture than what is seen in other listening locations on that bottom bar there. What is it about the car that makes the linear audio experience that much more appealing? Listening to on-demand audio means more time navigating menus and choices when on the road demands one's attention. Linear audio is, for most people, just easier in the car. The hardware is simple, and making an audio experience requires fewer decisions. AM, FM, and Sirius offer listening experiences where there's no pausing or rewinding, and the content choices are made by program directors, all positives in that linear environment. Uh, and there's also the added experience for radio, right? That added element that there's actual live people, in most cases, speaking to the listeners in real time, which provides companionship while driving. Now, let's look again at the linear audio in the car, 74%. This time, uh, for the US audience, I've broken it out, AM, FM, radio, and Sirius XM. We, of course, know Sirius XM is only a factor in North America. Uh, where if we were to do the study in Europe, we can guess a portion of that Sirius XM listening would go to likely another form of linear audio like DAB. And here's the breakdown by vehicle model year. Respondents with older vehicles were more likely to report listening to radio. 
but really there are only 10 points be between vehicle model years 2010 and older versus vehicle model years 2019 and newer. While new dashboard technology, it's a factor here. The newer dashboard does not push radio out of the lead when it comes to time spent listening in the car. And here's another way to think about old versus new. We just celebrated the 10th anniversary of Share of Year, so we have a decade worth of trending data available. The top bar here sh shows what the share of time spent with audio in the car looks back in 2014. Then 69% of time with audio in the car went to radio and Sirius XM tied with owned music. Again today, radio still gets the majority share of 59% of time in the car, and Sirius XM gets 16. So yes, there is a shift in behavior, but still very, very broadcast dominant. So I recognize design is not part of my expertise. But, you know, I, I did a little thinking, um, you know, coming into this uh, conference. And based on my research, I've mocked up a model of what the ideal infotainment system is. Of course, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um, if you go by reach, that radio portion should be much larger, much bigger part of the, of the screen. Uh, really, I don't pretend to do your job. Uh, I know it's more complicated than that. But I just want you to see radio should be prominent based on listening. So back to my real job, consumer research. While conducting interviews with car owners last year, I was eager to see how people interacted with their dashboards, especially with some of the new fancy options available. Uh, and while they were happy to show off the bells and whistles on their new dashboards, they were just as happy to talk about their favorite radio station and why that made the car experience so enjoyable. And that's why radio is an essential part of the in-car experience. The drivers we spoke to cannot disconnect radio from the car experience. The two are linked in the minds of the consumer in every market we studied. Part of the radio success in the car is this. 80% of recent and prospective car buyers in the U UK, France, and Germany agree. It's easier to listen to radio in the vehicle than other types of audio. There isn't much friction in the user experience when it comes to accessing the radio. And where there is less friction, there is more use and a more enjoyable experience. And in the US, we heard ease of use is a reason for choosing the radio in the car from 72% of those who used a vehicle. And that was true among the younger generations as well. 69% of those 13 to 34 said ease of use was a reason they use radio in the car. In the 2021 Car Buyer Survey, we asked, how much do you agree that FM and DAB radio and DAB plus radio, radio should be standard in every car? The response from all five countries were staggeringly similar. 89% or higher from each country agreed. Radio should be a vehicle standard. And when thinking about future purchases, 91% of recent and prospective car buyers said it was important that their recent or next vehicle has FM or DAB or DAB, DAB plus radio. And among prospective car buyers, 82% said they would be much less or much less likely to purchase their next vehicle if they did not have a radio. So am I being sappy by saying radio in the car? is a love story. Yes, yes, I am being a sappy American. But also, how can you look at the data without coming away and saying, wow, people really do love radio in the car. Radio is the most listened to audio platform in the car, and it's because it's an essential part of the in-car experience. People love radio in the car because so many of their listening habits stem from deep feelings, that deep connection to radio. Radio is an essential part of the in-car experience for many practical reasons. It's easy, but more powerfully, radio is essential because of the personal connections to the content, thanks to all of you great creators. So if you're asking yourself if you should prioritize radio content on the dashboard, well, Taylor says, it's a love story, baby, just say yes. 
and uh, a platform that serves so many people so well, uh, so well, deserves easy access and prime placement on the dashboard. I hope the next time you hear a Taylor Swift song, perhaps on Capitol uh, News Station, um, you remember that radio combined uh, contributed to a huge part of her success. Radio really was a big part in growing Taylor's career. And radio is and will continue to be a part of your success. Thank you. We're really proud to be sponsoring this, as we have done in the past, uh, and also to our Czech colleagues for hosting us. Um, it really is an important event. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit um, about prominence. And we heard from uh, Gwen and Thomas earlier about just how important the prominence of radio is. We're supporters of the playbook, uh, and I'm going to do a bit, slightly deeper dive into that. Um, and I feel I'm uniquely positioned to talk about prominence. You may have noticed I'm a tall giant, and people tell me they can see me from miles away. And in a crowd, I stand out and they can always find me. And that's what we want for radio. So I'm going to focus in a bit on that. But before we do that, I, for those of you that don't know who Radio Player are, I'm just going to do a, a very quick introductory video. Well, radio is still massive. It deserves to have a very strong future. Hello, speaker. Play radio. Hey, speaker. Play radio. Say goodbye to the limitation of traditional radio. The radio player is an important platform for radio stations that centralizes various stations and content. It's huge. The radio player is driving the future of radio. Join us in shaping a connected world where every voice finds an audience. I think if you run a radio station, your job is to make it really easy for your listeners to come back to your station. Powering broadcasters worldwide. You know, we've been locked in a box, I think, from a creative point of view that AM FM technology box for so long, and that's been limiting. It's about diving into a new era of innovation and collaboration. But there will be more technology that allows us to do what we do best in a more efficient and quick way. As technology advances, it can give us better distribution and we're going to get better opportunities for innovation through technology. Connecting every car, home and device to the beat of the world. Radio player is the key for having a strong presence of radio in the car. Especially in a digital dashboard environment. There are too many car manufacturers for me to pick up the phone and try to negotiate, you know, a space in the connected car dashboard for our company. But maybe at scale as an industry, Radio Player can solve that solution. So I think Radio Player is hugely important from that point of view. Okay, so when it comes to automotive, our main focus is hybrid radio with DAB Plus at its centre. And that's why prominence is so important to us. So I'm just going to start, if you look at some of the broader challenges facing DAB Plus broadcast radio's prominence, there's a few, it's not limited to these things, but new technologies and user interfaces are having an impact. Everyone in this audience will know about Google's Android automotive operating system and the fact that it brings into the car an app um, ecosystem. And that brings with it more competition, more availability of other media services that radio needs to battle against and fight against. There's also a demand for new digital revenue models um, by our OEM partners, and radio is not immune to that. It may be that some other services are even buying a prominent place, um, but we need to think about that. Um, and the perception of radio within the automotive industry, I think the people in this room and our partners here all understand the importance of radio that we've just heard about from Edison. But I think there are many others in the broader automotive ecosystem, new digital teams, who maybe don't understand the value of broadcast DAB Plus radio. And that's why World DAB and others are so important in that communication. But some of these challenges are also opportunities, and I'm going to dive into that a little bit. So when we look at prominence for DAB Plus broadcast, what are the ways in? Well, you've got the radio button that Thomas referenced earlier. You've also got voice, and arguably voice could be and maybe should be the most prominent way into broadcast. It's one request and you're in. We'll see about that. You've also got smartphone mirroring solutions, potentially. 
we have heard that Apple CarPlay in their new system are maybe going to be able to access the broadcast radio tuners. Could be another way in. So I just want to look at where we are today, where we're going tomorrow, some of the trends that might impact prominence, and then look at some of the things that we can do collectively to keep DAB Plus broadcast radio prominent. So in terms of where we are today, we did do a quick bit of research. I think uh, I, I couldn't claim that this is completely representative, but what we did is we went in the UK to look at 10 new cars. These were from the top 10 OEM brands, new models. And we looked at two things. We looked at the radio button, the broadcast DAB Plus radio button prominence. And we also looked at voice and the extent to which you got an accurate request and then it played on DAB Plus broadcast radio. So let's just have a quick look at the radio button. Now, I don't know if you're able to see that. I'll just talk you through some of these things. But the first thing we looked at was, is there a radio button on the home screen? The number of clicks to access the radio experience, the number of clicks to actually play a radio station, and then the journey that gets you from first way in to actually selecting a station. Now, a few things that are interesting here. First of all, um, there were six out of 10 of those cars did have a radio button on the screen. Now, what's interesting is that some of those are configurable now with a touch screen, so you can actually move it around. Come back to that later. Obviously, four of them didn't, and that was typically behind audio or media or entertainment, and I think that's done for reasons that we kind of understand, but no radio button. Then when you look at the number of clicks to play a radio station, coming back to what we heard earlier from Thomas, four clicks seems too many. If you're searching for a station, four clicks in seems like a lot. That's not real prominence, I would argue. Um, there was one car which had a very good performance, had a radio button, you went straight into an integrated list, you selected your station, two clicks, pretty good. The final thing I would, I would say here is that in half of the cars that we looked at, you still had to select, once you got into radio, select your source, you had to choose FM or DAB. Now, we would argue that you need a simple integrated station list where you default to DAB first and FM if the station isn't available on DAB. That's the simplest way to search for a station. But we still have this option of source. So I think it's probably fair to say, although it's not representative, it's an indicator and it's a bit of a mixed bag. Now let's have a quick look at voice. So what we did was we asked for the same station that was available on DAB Plus with good coverage in the area where we were. And we, we, we looked at, did it successfully play the station? And then did it play, it's actually on DAB because it was available on DAB. Well, five out of the 10, we did get a successful search and it did play on DAB. But I think the others highlight what we heard earlier. It's, I think voice is, there's a lot of work to do in voice. So we got a real mixed bag. Some, one car played completely random podcasts in no way related to the uh, request of the station that we were asking for. Another car played um, songs from a Spotify playlist that were maybe related to the sort of co the name of the station in some way, but didn't play the station itself. And I think one of the most surprising was uh, one car, which was actually Google Assistant, when we asked for the station, which was available on DAB, suggested that you had to download uh, an, an app to listen to the station. Um, now, actually, what was the other thing that was interesting was that that particular broadcaster doesn't have an automotive app. So it wasn't even possible to do that. So I think what had happened was there's a smart speaker experience been placed in the car, but it's frustrating because it should just play on DB. That's bad for the listener, bad for the broadcaster and the experience. So I think there's a lot of work to do, particularly on voice. And it, but it gave us a good feel for where we are now. Now, looking to the future, what sort of things are going to impact DAB Plus broadcast radio's prominence? Um, well, we know that the dashboard screen is getting bigger and higher resolution. And we know, and we were at CES in January, and that's a really good place to get a feel for what's coming in the next few years. I know many of you will have been there as well. But you can see there that um, the things that were on show, some of the OEMs that were there were showing you know, lots of content. When you've got these big high resolution screens, you want great content to fill it up. So that means lots of services. It also means the importance of radio looking good as well as sounding great. Um, so lots of sort of trends. Let's dive into some of the sort of trends that we're seeing that will impact prominence in the future. First one was the one I mentioned earlier, configurability. Now that's good and bad. It means that if radio is there out of the box, it means that somebody could move it away if they wanted to. Equally, they could 
put it there if it's not there from the get-go. And that may be something that broadcasters need to think about. Design. You know, we're in a situation now, many cars have said, well, we've got the apps for environment, and that could be a great thing. We will see more apps. Would we see in the future, I think we will see maybe a linking between the standard environments, the broadcast radio environment, and the app environment. Could that eventually become a single user experience for radio? I don't know. Or will it stay a separate, divided experience? I'm not sure, but we need to work on that collectively. User data is going to be ever more important. You know, we need to be able to evidence the popularity of broadcast DAB Plus radio. Obviously, the consumer research that World DAB and others have done is important, but as we see user data coming in, we can share that with our OEM colleagues, and they can see just how valued radio and broadcast radio is. I think global search is an interesting one. So in many cars now, we're seeing um, lots of different services, and if you put a search term in, in the top right-hand side shows this a bit, if you search for a radio, it will show you anything related to that search term across all the media services you've got. The problem is, if in this particular example, we search for a specific station, but the actual station was at the bottom right, and all the things you got before that were, you know, they were podcasts, playlists, or whatever. So we just need to think about how global search works in an automotive environment. I think what we saw at CES and what we're seeing now is that AI is going to be driving a lot of new features. We know this. Um, but for voice, it could be particularly important. When um, the voice assistants are learning dynamically about what people are asking for, it seems to us that you'll be able to get a much more accurate voice search. Now, we're going to hear later on from Nick and Gregor, I think, a bit about what broadcasters need to do to provide phonemes and information about the station that provides accurate voice requests, something that we do and our many, many, many stations do. And the two things combined, we hope, we'll see a step change in voice performance. Tuner access I mentioned, we'll wait and see what that looks like. Um, I said Apple CarPlay seems to be that in the future they'll be able to access the tuners. It'll be interesting to see what that user journey is um, and how prominent that experience might be. We'll see. Autonomous driving, uh, I was at an event in Detroit last week and there were quite a few people there who were bullish about level four autonomous driving where you can just start to feel a bit more autonomy in the car, becoming a reality in the next few years. I'm not personally convinced, but when we get to that, Roger may tell us more later, but when we get to that point, if we get to that point, that will be a game changer for the entertainment experience in the car, for sure, and for radio. And then driver safety, I think this is really, really important. So the simplicity, I mentioned the four clicks we looked, we looked at earlier, that simple one touch or one request access to DAB Plus broadcast radio is crucial. And there's been a lot of commentary recently about the potential of maybe moving away from the sort of uh, touch screen, big high resolution dashboard approach to more fixed buttons. We've seen that the automotive safety standards organization, Euro NCAP, have announced that they're going to be looking more closely at infotainment screens because they feel they're becoming more distracting and potentially having more of an impact on driver safety. We have seen in the last few years the number of accidents go up, We've seen numbers in Europe and in the US. Maybe they're not attributable to um, driver distraction, but we don't know. And they're recommending that that simple one-touch button is the way to do it. Maybe a return to fixed buttons. Let's see. The other article there is interesting. This was an article in Bloomberg that we saw, and this was arguing that uh, if um, OEMs want to, uh, want to compete more with the smartphone mirroring systems, they should make a return to fixed buttons rather than dashboard screens, because the, the sort of the touchscreen environment is where um, uh, the smartphone mirroring solutions win and have more experience. We'll see how that plays out, but that could have an impact on the, the radio button for sure. So what do we need to do? What are the things we can actually do proactively to keep DAB Plus broadcast radio prominent? Now, I've deliberately not talked about the regulation, the ECC regulation. World DB is doing a lot of work on that. And I think equally, this, um, this list I'm about to show is equally relevant for availability as well. We heard from Thomas earlier, we have seen one of the first cars that hasn't got a DAB Plus broadcast radio tuner. Now, we've been able to secure a prominent radio position in the UI they do have, um, and it's gonna have official metadata. That said, we're very, very clear that we want all cars to have DAB Plus as standard, and we hope that will change in the future. But in terms of what we can do to keep DAB Plus broadcast radio prominent, I firmly believe we've got to earn the right. Um, and we earn the right in a number of ways. 
I think we need to excite users through the user experience. That has to be hybrid radio with DAB+, has to be really personalized, rich with metadata, and simplicity is key. Simplicity will win in this environment of the future. We believe, oh, well, I think people here will believe there needs to be a fair exchange. And we heard about it earlier in the playbook. You know, if we're able to collaborate with our OEM partners and provide rich radio content and metadata, power a fantastic experience, it seems fair that we can ask for prominence for radio, an easy way in to the radio experience. I do think we're going to need to look more at revenue sharing opportunities. That's not of existing revenue, but potentially of additional revenue opportunities we could create in the car. That's for both broadcasters and for OEMs. I think education communication is key, and this is where WorldDB and others really come, in, come into play. Um, using some of the rich user data we can now collect, uh, and also research like we had earlier for medicine, is going to be really important. I think, again, the colleagues that we have here and probably online from OEMs probably understand the real value of radio and broadcast radio, but there, I think there are many that don't and may be surprised at just how strong and valuable broadcast radio is in the car. So being relentless in our communication is really important. Now, the partnerships and collaboration are key in this. So this is both with, I would say, OEMs, but also, for example, voice assistant providers. That's about collaborating and working on the next generation of radio experience. That's absolutely key. And then finally, I think this is an interesting one for broadcasters. If you think about configurability, I do wonder if there's an opportunity for broadcasters to talk to listeners about that and about making radio your home screen choice, broadcast radio a home screen choice. Again, that needs some thinking about, but it may be an interesting avenue to pursue for some. So I hope that's been a really interesting uh, sort of a, a it's asked, just a look at uh, radio prominence, DAB plus radio prominence, and what we can do. Just finally, from a radio player perspective, we're trying to sort of follow that list as much as we can. And there's three key areas we're working on, providing data and that evidence from our new uh, data and AI platform, really focusing on the partnerships and collaborations with OEMs, and also asking for that fair exchange. It's something that we have built into our partnerships, and we think it's important. Thank you very much. So good news. In 30 minutes, it is lunchtime. <laughs> uh, but before that, I actually want to make sure that you attend Catherine's presentation. She's going to talk about some things that uh, uh, Jackie mentioned she loves, which is communication and marketing. So you are going to love that. And uh, uh, these puppets here, I'm not sure we call them puppets, but uh, we'll see later Bubble on. Head. They are very interesting. Uh, very, very, very interesting. So we, we, we heard a lot about radio prominence with... Uh, the playbook or with a presentation from Lawrence a few minutes ago. We just so we just so heard a lot about radio being a daily companion. And we also heard that radio was a love story from Megan. Okay. So we're going to take to start with, we're going to, to take a view from a broadcaster. So I'm very, very pleased to welcome Prune de Lafage Thank from you. Radio Classic. And uh, Prune is going to uh, to give us a perspective which is slightly different from everything you have heard so far. It's already a broadcaster view that we have not heard so far from this, uh, uh, this morning. And uh, Prun, first, perhaps you want to introduce yourself and the group you belong to. Yes, of course. Thank you very much. Uh, good morning, everybody. Um, I'm Prun. I'm the deputy director of Radio Classic. Uh, which belong to the Les Echos group, Les Echos Le Parisien group, which is a media division of LVMH. Um, Les Echos Le Parisien reaches 25 million of French people every day. And we have a, a portfolio of a very prestigious brand like Les Echos or Le Parisien, maybe you know. And we cultivate a two core values in our group, commitment to quality, and a spirit of sustainable innovation. We have a staff of uh, 1,800 uh, uh, people with uh, 700 uh, journalists. And uh, we are leader in several, um, in several sorry, um, uh, themes, <laughs> uh, like uh, economic and business uh, content and or arts. And we are leader in uh, Europe on uh, classical music with a brand you may know, um, 
uh, Medici, Mezzo, Eurarts, and Radio Classic is a figurehead of the classic uh, music uh, in France. Headed by Pierre Louet, the CEO and chairman of our group, our group is a leader in several segments, like, like I said, economic and financial information or arts. Um, now I'll speak to you about um, Radio Classic. Just, just before you, you, you go and talk about Radio Classic, I don't know if you, you heard that correctly, uh, um, but Radio Classic belongs to a group which is LVMH, that's Louis Vuitton. Okay, and uh, so that means they belong to the most successful luxury brand in the world. It's a, a, a company which makes billions of euros uh, of revenue. Uh, so it's very, very solid shareholder for uh, for the media group that belongs uh, to uh, uh, that uh, uh, the media group that belongs to LVMH. And so Radio Classic is part of that group. And now, Prune, definitely tell us more about Radio Classic. So Radio Classic is a leading station for classical music, economic, and business information and culture. Uh, we are, the, our programs are run by uh, popular uh, hosts like David Abiker, Christian Morin, Franck Ferrand, and maybe one you know more than the other, um, Gauthier Capuçon, the violinist, uh, the violinist. No, not violinist. Uh, <laughs> I don't know in English, sorry. <laughs> so FM covers uh, 100 uh, city and town for Radio Classic, and we have uh, 1 million of, of listeners every day. And we are also powerful on digital audience because we have uh, 4 million uh, listeners every month. And uh, we have uh, al also uh, 5 million uh, podcasts each month. Um, we have taken the DAB Plus to come to the subject uh, since uh, 2018 uh, because we had no transmitter in the east of France and DAB Plus was a solution to, to be heard by our listeners in this region. And um, a bit later, we took the national rollout strategy as soon as the multiplexes uh, were launched in France. And today, our technical manager and our um, teams are very involved in this project. Merci, Pun. So I, I do remember some of you were uh, part of the launch of uh, DAB Plus in Strasbourg in 2018. Um, to put a uh, Radio Classic strategy into perspective, just want to summarize for you uh, what the strategy is for DAB Plus uh, deployment in France. So just to put that again in perspective, uh, France is 36,000 cities, 36,000. I think that's half of the cities in Europe. Um, that's a, you know, a division which comes from way back when, I think Napoleon or before. Uh, and uh, you have you know, 36,000 cities, you have 100 departments, what we call departments, so uh, a larger area. And then we have 13 regions. We like to do things very complicated in France. And uh, uh, that means also 900 different services for radio, 900 different services. Most of them are on FM. And uh, the strategy for DAB Plus follows basically the way France is organized. So you have local deployments, regional deployments, and national deployments. So today, both the regional and national multiplexes cover more than 60% uh, of the population in France. And this is what Radio Classic is doing, so basically following and embracing the strategy of deployment, deployment of DAB Plus uh, uh, in France. So now, Prune, what about your strategy with DAB Plus? Yes, uh, I will sp speak about four main reasons uh, about uh, DAB, why we choose uh, DAB Plus. Uh, first, we need to be available at every place um, at any moment. The second one is uh, it's very strategic for us. I will explain you uh, this later. And then we can speak about uh, environmental reason and at last um, a bit about um, our independence our, as sorry, as an um, editor with no gatekeeper. So the first, the first reason is uh, that radio changed over the time. First we had AM, then FM, and now DAB+. And Radio Classic lives uh, in, this, in its time, 
So we need to be as close as possible to our listeners, being everywhere at any time. Even more on new devices like in DAB+, which provide more metadata and a better seamless experience, which is very important, important to customer sounds experience uh, in core. Um, the second reason, and maybe the main reason, is that it's strategic for us, Radio, Radio Classic. Uh, maybe you know that FM band is saturated, and it means that it's quite impossible for us to increase our coverage of the ter French territories. Um, other radio like RTL, France Musique, France Culture have around 500 uh, transmitters in uh, France. France Inter has uh, even uh, 600 uh, transmitters and we have only 100 uh, transmitters. So it means that in average, we have three to, th three to six less uh, transmitters than our competitors. So DIB Plus is the opportunity to extend our coverage of the French territory and more, more than that, to play on equal terms with our competitors. We could gain one point of uh, audience share, so it's very important for us. Uh, so thanks to the DIB Plus, I already said it, but we, we, we can um, reach uh, East of France and uh, Pays Basque from a few months where the population is, uh, has a, a strong affinity with the program we offer. So the economics are, are very clear uh, on why the AB Plus for, uh, for Radio Classic, but what about the environmental benefits that you mentioned earlier? Yes, I, I will be uh, faster, but uh, the, the AB Plus uh, group together 13 uh, radio, so it's best than one radio for one transmitter. This is a the, the environment part, we can say it's greener. And for the last reason I mentioned, um, as a FM broadcast, the AB Plus technology enables us to maintain our independence and sovereignty as a um, radio uh, editor. There is no in intermediary between the listener and, the, and us radio. So as we know, we are an automotive conference here. So how important is the automotive sector, the car sector for Radio Classic? Yes, uh, I will say, I will give two main reasons, two big category of reasons. So the first one are business reasons and the second one would be um, social responsibility. So the first one, the, the business, um, as you know, and as we, as it has been said before, uh, radio is a proximity and companion media. We even add, act as a timekeeper. You know if you are late, depending on what you are listening, where and when. And the link with the radio host is very close because the radio listener, because radio, sorry, we are in uh, the listener life. For example, in the kitchen, in the living room, in the bathroom, and we even accompany them to their way, uh, in their way to their to their work, sorry. And in car, we can say that the radio is a driver companion. For example, when you drive drive alone or during the night, and it could even be an ally when you don't want to speak or when you have calm, <laughs> when you want to have calm in your in your car. So I won't be back on the figures and on the presentation of Edison Research Search, even I. As a, her, their sorry figures um, feed uh, my 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 sorry numbers. Yes, my numbers and, and my my position. Um, but I will add some of the, some other figures uh, relative to to our target audience. Fifty two percent of the radio listening is done on mobility, and thirty five percent uh, in cars. Uh, from Monday to Friday, 60 of the outdoor listeners are less than 50 years old. And uh, maybe the most important, 86% uh, percent of decision makers listen to the radio. This has, these are the three uh, figures. And I will add that um, radio is one of the main media to advert, advert, advertise sorry, and um, sell costs. Actually, it's the second media after TV. Uh, so I will conclude by saying that keeping radio accessible in car 
is a necessity to us uh, radio editors and for the um, for the um, listeners uh, as we mentioned a bit earlier who are who are also car buyer and and uh, so so you mentioned radio being a companion okay but as you know in several countries elections just happen or elections are coming so I believe there is a connection between what you mentioned earlier being a, a radio editor and social responsibility. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yes. Uh, as a result of being a companion media, radio is also very trusted, 60%. Uh, and it's precisely the Radio Classic promises. We are deeply committed to decrypting, analyzing, and offering quality content contents to our listeners for both information and music. Algorithm of social network or platform adapt that their contents to um, the reader and to the listener. Um, uh, uh, sorry, uh, thoughts, and they lock them into their own pattern of uh, thoughts. And uh, as a reverse, program radio enrich and enlarge uh, the, the listener's uh, point of view. So. Um, radio is a very uh, strong tool to fight against uh, fake news and uh, to keep people well and free informed is, is essential in the area of fake news. That's why it's crucial to have a radio very accessible in car. And I will add that uh, if you um, I will. I will. I would add. Sorry, that media are not the only guardian of their future. The entire the entire ecosystem must play its part in defending democratic foundation. Les Écoles Parisiens is a committed is is a company committed in ESG issues. We have our part to to play as media, and even more so as a uh, committed company. But we cannot play in a, play it alone. Uh, it's important that that car constructors also take on their responsibility by taking re the radio accessible in cars. And I will conclude with one of the drivers of Les Echo Le Parisien Group by, um, by saying, uh, please together for a more responsible society. I thank you for your attention and patience with my English. <laughs> no, that was very good, uh, friend. thank you. Thank you very much. So, I believe it gave you a perspective which is slightly different from everything we heard so far. Social responsibility was not something we mentioned very often. We we talk about preeminence, we talk about loving radio and so on. And the last part of our presentation this morning is going to switch gear again. We're going to talk about communication and marketing. So I'm very pleased to, to welcome Catherine here, who is going to basically be our last speaker of the morning. Thank you, Catherine. Thank you. <laughs> Hello, um, I'm pleased to present our marketing campaign, The Bobbleheads. Um, I'm from Ofcom, my name is Catherine, I'm from the Swiss regulator. And maybe just to transition from what we heard before, I think our, a common goal that we as regulator have with the broadcasters is that we want our uh, the content, which can be music, can be information, might be sports, we want that to reach the audience and we want the audience to know where to find it. And this is why we have a marketing campaign which is targeted especially at drivers. I'll just give you, for those who don't know yet, a little overview of the situation in Switzerland. You might know that um, DAB coverage, DAB plus has been uh, really advanced in Switzerland. Um, we have very good coverage, almost 100% coverage of DAB plus in our country. Listening is mostly digital, um, can be DAB plus, can be IP, but in any case, FM is only a really small part. I think we have like about 20% of listening is via FM. We've had um, a switch off of FM has planned for a while. It's been pushed along a couple of times. Um, the last date was 2024. 
And now the FM licenses have been extended until the end of 26. But we think that uh, well, it depends on the radio stations because it's up to them now, but FM is going to begin to fizzle out. We expect that starting from 2025 and in 2026, we're going to have less and less uh, FM coverage. And this is something that the population needs to know. That's why we have a marketing campaign. Um, what we also have in Switzerland is we think that listening at home is covered. They have one form of digital radio at home. Listening at work is more or less covered as well. The cars are seen as the last place that we have a little bit more FM still. And we really want them to switch over now. We want them to switch to DAB+. And this is why we have a marketing campaign. And now I'll give you a little bit of background of the concept of this marketing campaign, which um, was invented by what well, we have a marketing agency which has really good ideas the masterminds Schultz and friends came up with uh, this great campaign we had a first phase of the campaign which was called the sensibilization campaign I don't know you might know this little radio called Dubsy that was um, to show people the value of DAB+. Plus. It was to raise awareness. The idea was, this is the quality of DAB+. Plus. This is what it can offer you and to make DAB+, Plus known everywhere. Then we had a small gap in communication because we weren't quite sure when we're going to switch off, if we're going to, well, if was always yes, but the date has been moved a few times. Now, we're in the mobilization phase. Mobilization means, if you look at the message, the first message was your radio thinks of you. Now you think of your radio. Now it's up to you. You need to change something in your car. Because even though um, we have this really good uh, regulation, the European regulation that all new cars have DAB+, we still do have quite a lot of old cars on the road that just have FM. So they are the ones who need to change. It might be with an adapter, it might be with a new radio, but something has to, if they want to listen to the radio, they have to get active. Next one. There we go. So this is the idea of the campaign. We heard before that radio can be a companion in the car. Um, and this is basically the compact, uh, we have uh, personified this, this companion. Um, we will have these little mascots, the bobbleheads. You see them over here. I'll present them a bit more in detail in a minute. Um, they, they personify radio content. Um, they're next to the radio and in our ads, they say, this is what you listen to. This is what you like. And then sh they, <laughs> show the radio and say, this is where you need to change something. So this is the, the, the idea of this whole uh, communications campaign. And then I will present the band. Over here we have a bit of show and tell. We have uh, a pop diva, we call her. She's a uh, pop music, maybe from the 90s. We have a rock star. Here you go. That's a rock star, bobblehead. We have sports content because some people want to listen to sports. Uh, a news news moderator, a guy who uh, gives us the news. And oldies as well. Here you go. If anyone wants to listen to oldies, she's going to help you. <laughs> and the whole marketing campaign was uh, created around these little figures, the companions, as we can call them. We have a whole range of marketing materials. We had posters, we had films, we had social media. And each time, the message was to do with the content. So if it was um, like the hippie lady would say, all these forever, and she would uh, come from that idea. The news, moder the news guy, he might have said that, oh, careful, there's, good, there's a tra traffic jam. We don't want to jam in your radio, change your radio, something like that. Uh, we had uh, what you, these kind of um, social media 
uh, posts where you could choose if you prefer to listen to pop or oldies. So a very, very interactive campaign. And to, uh, I'm going to end with the videos. So you'll see um, the diva in German and then the uh, our hippie woman in French. Hey, hey. Hello, Switzerland. You're seid immer noch auf diese UKW, yes? Oh no, please, schalt um auf die Guitar Radio. Mm -hmm. Dann könnt ihr mich weiter hören. Beautiful people, diese Song is for you. Hey, UKW hey. wird abgeschaltet. Stellen Sie um auf Digitalradio. Mehr hey. auf dabplus.ch. Bye bye life FM. Bye bye life FM. Bye bye fading in the sky. Passons ensemble au DAB Plus et continuons de partager les good vibes sur les ondes. Peace. Faites comme la FM. Passez au DAB Plus. Plus d'informations sur dabplus.ch.